right. I have my volume should be up. Y'all should be right about there. Uh, and uh, can you hear me now? Yes. What? What? Just I thought we were testing volume levels. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We can. Okay. Greetings and salutations, everyone. Welcome back to the End of Planar Crossroads, and also welcome back to our discussion time, which we we block as Around the Hearth, but right now we're doing a special segment called Nightmare Layers. You have probably caught our past two episodes, if you're on this one, which were about white dragons and then, and then red dragons. Now we are going over green dragons. So um, I think that's... What we're going to start with now, I've already got the the text appropriately done. Um, we'll see if I forget to switch it before the next <laughs> recording that we do. But Probably. right now it's done. So we're on green dragons. Some basic info about dragons and green dragons before we start. So green dra um, dragons to remember. General info is from zero to five years. They are considered wormlings, and that goes all the way up to 1,200 years. 1200 years plus is what you would call a great worm so you've got that long time period to deal with always remember the cobalts and that's basically the blue dragons as far as you know that's the green, green, green dragons green. basically the basic dragon information basic 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 there we go when you miss the color that's kind of the most basic yeah <laughs> they're all primary that's a primary point to put in there so we might I had to do that. Um, so, who would like to begin? <laughs> no one's volunteering. Wow. Again. Okay. Not sure, everyone all at once. Okay. I didn't. I didn't even hear the like. Who would like to begin? And then it just my brain just went. <laughs> that sounds about right. Okay. Connor is the guest. He seems gung ho. Oh. Let's have it. Let him have it first. All right. First off, hi. I'm Connor. Kane mentioned me in the White Dragon episode. Anyway, uh, if we're talking about layers, white, the green dragons are actually very simple when it comes to their layers. They like caves. They like anything in the wild. If you are thinking of a dragon in your head and you think there's a forest around it, you're probably thinking of a green dragon. The typical green dragon layer is twisting caverns that go mostly either under the can like start under the canopy and goes beneath the root line of the forest uh they depending on your setting they might have a library in there which would be kind of dope to be found carved out of rocks uh anybody else have anything to cover with basics on what the actual architecture would be i think they probably their caves are also their bases occur around like lakes or bodies of water because they do have a natural swim speed, which is they do. I, I imagine when uh, any creature in Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder or your TTRPG of choice, if your creature like natively possesses a means to move quickly through a terrain, they probably exist in that terrain in and or around it. Well, yeah, and that's the other thing to consider is that green dragons, if you're putting them in a story, uh, could work like they're villains obviously but could work very well against black dragons because blacks live in swamps which have pretty big overlap with bodies of water and forests mm -hmm. yeah but focusing on green so just remind me the idea of this is to how to craft a proper lair for your evil dragon evil evil dragon lair crafting and also the different you don't have to stick to a specific lore consistent layer like if you think no, of no, another no. layer then outside of the one that's hid behind the waterfall or something like that mm -hmm. then you can also branch that into that oh hell yeah no green dragons uh exist just in the most ancient forests and depending on your game that could have any number of things in it it could be an old abandoned fortress it could be a dilapidated castle it could be an ancient tree that has overgrown above the canopy of the rest of the forest that has been hollowed out by the dragon to use as a home. There is a lot you could do there. Mm -hmm. One thing I personally like to throw into a green dragon lair 
is when you're going, let's say you're going underground, you're going through caverns. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say you got to use the halfling as a canary because uh, <laughs> there's going to be well, a lot of poison gas in there and not a lot of place for it to disperse. And green dragons do like to eat smaller races. It's their favorite. Oh, they do. Yeah, maybe you'll get some good points. You just tie the halfling to a fishing lure and... <laughs> That's how you bait him out of the cave. No, but something I like is uh, having the poison gas. It forces the party to find a way through it, either gas masks of some sort, uh, breathing spells. Hell, just use fire and ignite the damn thing. Uh, if you really want to, That's I, I have no, no responsibility for the ensuing cave-in. Uh, but pools in a dragon's lair, a green dragon's lair, should be approached with caution because you don't know what that pool is it could be stagnant water that has just dripped down from the ceiling it could be tree sap who knows it could even just be a pile of acid because the little bastards like i said have a lot of overlap with black dragons uh and the poison you know once that liquefies rather than is gaseous it's not gonna be good mm -hmm. My vision, for, if I may, mm -hmm. my vision for um, the Green Dragon Lair is a little bit more druidic, as my experience with them has them being um, very wise in the ways of nature and appreciative of that. Still very much evil and domineering, but with a deep appreciation for all of the wealth and riches that the life of their surroundings has in it. So my... It, my picture of where they live as opposed to like some cave lost in the woods the lair starts with the tree line and you've already found the dragon's lair it's this whole forest and it stalks you and haunts you from the moment that you step into its domain but as far as like where are you likely to find it does it have its own alcove i i imagine it finding some magnificent piece of jungle topography like perhaps you have the um, the hollow between two mountains coming down and then an enormous waterfall that cascades off of it. The dragon can go from the thick of this jungle forested wood at the top of this precipice and then out over a waterfall over its magnanimous jungle lair. Um, alter also, like or alternatively, it could find the most dragony, druidic style structures. Maybe it's found ancient giant stones that rise up out of the forest. You could only see if you could see through the trees and feel that stone. And it's grown or manipulated the growth of the trees to make a clearings or rings of ancient trees in these rings of druidic stones that it circles around. Maybe a giant camphor tree in the center of it that's old and hollowed and it can hop around on the perches although it as though it was a canary because this tree is itself so big um i think of those places as being like its own um natural reverence and domain where it feels powerful but it also feels like it's in a setting of powerful nature Oh yeah, I'm picturing now like a like a green dragon, like a fully grown green dragon in like in an old growth redwood forest where like it even is dwarfed by the the truly mm -hmm. titanic size of the trees. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Just basically anything you would imagine any cool topography you imagine in an ancient forest, green dragon would take it over just you know, cuz it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Dragons, chromatics, like, yeah. Lost in the woods monster that isn't necessarily horror themed, and you're not quite expecting for like low mid-ish level wilderness exploration that goes mm -hmm. into a forest for a little while. And mm -hmm. wait, well, hey guys, what's that smell? Burp, and then you yeah. die horribly. <laughs> yeah, horrifically. I think I my agree. favorite thing about green dragons that I've used a lot since second edition came out. Uh, in second edition, their breath weapon does not target a reflex save. Rather, it targets a fortitude save because they're it's literally just vomiting chlorine gas at people. Yeah, I mean, they're they're the 
they like the red dragons are a war crime in in, in dragon form. So. <laughs> oh, they are. The only time I've ever used one that's exactly what oh, I'm not up to. <laughs> See, I was, was trying to avoid. Sorry, go ahead. Or do, we don't we don't avoid the war crimes here. We, we don't we don't avoid the mustard <laughs> gas breath. Okay, because I was gonna or say like my after favorite at... undead template. I it was in Kingmaker. I needed to replace the like forest drake because if you run a first edition adventure path, you know that around book two or so, the party, unless they're using a low point buy and content that was released only before the printing of the AP, will like rapidly <laughs> outrun the adventure in terms of power and stuff. So oh, like yeah. I took out took out the forest drake, replaced it with a young green dragon. And there was going to be this whole, like, let it be really scary and the party is scared of it. Oh, wow. But the party also included two barbarians at the time. Oh, good. So it died very, very quickly, but not before doing a bunch of bad things in that surrounding area of the forest. And it's the only time I've ever used a green dragon, but I like to use them in conjunction with a first edition monster. I forget if it is an undead or an aberration. I think it's an undead. What's it's it called? Called, a, called a trench mist. Oh, nice. nice. Uh, aberration. It's literally formed when uh, too many people get mustard gassed. Its first printing was in Resputin Must Die in Random Winter, if that tells you anything. Oh, yep. Yeah. And it's uh, essentially just this giant blob of somewhat sentient mustard gas that washes over people, kills them, then they become juju zombies under the control of that quasi-sentient mustard gas, which continues to gaseously float on and do... Oh, God, I think it's... Well, I think, not like I have it right here opened up. Uh, 66 acid, 66 negative energy every turn you're inside the thing. Yeah. How very... It's, that's uh, a lot. How very black cauldron... Yeah. 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 I was gonna say, like, after reading Green Dragons and the fact that they uh, have a miasma and a and a breath weapon uh, that's poison gas, and they prefer tight, cor cavernous corridors. You know, really brought the World War One vibes to mind. <laughs> and they prefer trench warfare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep. It's literally like first line to the description of trench mist is they arise from the wholesale slaughter of troops with spells such as acid bog and cloud kill or you know a green so, dragon's breath weapon. And okay. so leading up to the really quick re leading up to the entrance of a green dragon's lair sort of in a forest like a mountainous forest area he has carved these 5 foot deep trenches <laughs> that lace their way down the side of the mountain up to the entrance in such a way that it becomes very difficult to climb the mountain without going through the trenches. Mm. Dun, dun, so dun. Just, you can just lay miasma down this horrific irrigation system of death. Well, that or you just have green kobolds with uh, repeater crossbows. <laughs> and then it becomes a charge through no man's land. Now you're just, <laughs> you thought you were on Kalari and you're actually in the Archon. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, you just you have got those big those big steel bastions right down at the bottom of the mountain, and then like uh, some stone shaped formed German pillboxes, <laughs> full of just kobolds with kobolds with repeaters. <laughs> and I was thinking, if you want to have um, uh, a lore or a um, environmental reason for having these corridors carved out, these long branching narrow corridors. Oh, there's a lot of jungle insects that do that. So if you imagine giant ants, giant termites, maybe the dragon has some sort of a queen presence over them. They carve the tunnels through the jungle, through the undergrowth, through the dirt around it, and make the dragon its tunnels. It can go anywhere, pop up from the undergrowth right underneath your feet. Druid mm -hmm. casually casting summon swarm every day to just make more ants to dig more trenches. Yep. <laughs> Uh, or you can, because they, this, the green dragons that we've been, t like we've been talking, visiting a green dragon, trying to be a steward, uh, student of it, they have the Archurix as their name for their storm shell and learning from it. Those kobolds that we've been mentioning could very easily have class levels so that they can do all these things we've been talking about as far as... <laughs> 
It's all I mean, of that like, nastiness. Be, right? With all of these dragons we've been talking about, like, if the, if a clan of kobold serves this dragon, there must be, like, a fistful of kobolds the dragon hates slightly less than the others. <laughs> <laughs> that, have, yeah. that have class levels, and in the case of a green dragon, like, they must all, like, they all have to be, like, rangers and druids and, mm, hunters. and hunters if you're playing Pathfinder. Ooh. Shifters? Oh, well, yeah, they're uh, they're the uh, field commanders for the trench warfare. <laughs> they're the ones. There's, that there's, your, there's your captain, your captain Jack Churchill, <laughs> screaming down the German pillbox hill with a claymore size for a kobold. You gotta, make the you gotta make the adventurers feel bad. They kill a kobold as they're going through the trenches, and they loot him. And he's got like a locket of his family back home. Back over the pond. It just There's you America. you you open it up and it's just got a picture of eggs. <laughs> yeah. like to trade like for anything out of the lair if you'll just give them a clean pair of socks right now. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> right. But yes, so learning from what I'm getting from everybody is learning from the uh, wars of our past helps us better understand the wars that these dragons w wage. Because there ain't no Geneva Convention there. Yeah, they don't, they don't give a shit. No, yeah. I, I, Geneva Convention I, when you are chaotic evil. I, well, yeah, I mean, lawful, lawful evil. Are they? Oh, fair enough. Green they're dragons. lawful, yeah. If you're doing Pathfinder, one of the big things with green dragons is they uh, want to be perfect. They're obsessed with being perfect physically, mentally. They, that's why they have like all that knowledge, all that lore. It's because they study. They want to know everything. But they also want to be in peak physical condition. Oh my so the, god, I forgot about this. Yeah, so, you know, they're kind of the chads of the dragon world. Oh, right, they're the only dragon that works out. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. the red dragons are just buff by nature. The green dragons, like, I just imagine a part of the map, once, like, the players actually map it out, they notice that there's one lane of hallways that goes in a perfect circle. And it's just, like, <laughs> and it's just a dragon. <laughs> Stronger, faster. <laughs> I, just, I think in Dragons of Galarian, it straight up says, I'm pretty sure that they leave just big ass trees, ostensibly, that they have yoked from the ground to weightlift with, if I remember correctly. <laughs> your party, your party of the you. dragon, do you even lift, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I picture your your group's rogue has still successfully infiltrated the green dragon's lair, and as he gets closer to like the sleeping chamber of the dragon, he can just faintly hear Fortunate Son playing off in the distance. Because <laughs> oh, he comes around the corner of the room to just see a dragon doing fucking push-ups, <laughs> and we jumped about see, forty years yeah, forward right. in the wars of the world. Yeah, I was thinking of a green dragon in a sleeveless shirt and booty shorts with a headband. Just doing like dance size. <laughs> I mean, any, every dragon, every dragon lair, and every dragon therein should be beautiful and unique and special. So one of them, <laughs> one of them is a Korean war vet, and the other one is doing macho macho man to the village people. <laughs> but if they do that, killed and looted. What if, workout yeah. book could they get? If they He's do getting, like getting your reps. In. If they do like Connor says, though, that means that when he goes to his. Uh, after he gets that whole workout done, part of the routine is to jazzercise outside and go like this beneath the waterfall. Exactly. <laughs> and then casually Flash nuke dance. people with your poison and turn them yeah. into monsters to serve you. <laughs> oh, what if it? Be... What if it's hmm? sweat? What if it's working out and its sweat is just poisonous, <laughs> and it washes down the river, and that's what's what's feeding into the pollution of the river. We gotta go. We all gotta. Go, we have to save the ecosystem by defeating the great dragon, Recharge Samans. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, all right, Connor. Connor, do you wanna do you wanna do a, a podcast with me where we just make encounters? We just do little story pieces for all the things we talk about in the Nightmare Lairs episodes. Yeah, probably. I, I, honestly, I can. You, like you know me, I like be, I like doing serious jamming. I can do very strange esoteric plots, but I also love putting shit posts just in the middle of it. <laughs> yeah, now look out for our new podcast, fucking uh, frightful foes. Our, 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 our episode one, the dread dragon retards him on. <laughs> totally, just, totally I'm, serious I'm, encounters, bro. 
Yeah, I'm, totally I'm looking at the I'm looking at the green the standard Pathfinder green dragon, and I'm just thinking of photoshopping a little afro on top of it. But <laughs> there you go. There's a thumbnail. <laughs> but uh, I also like the idea that the dragon enjoys the bounty of the forest or the jungle that it's in. Yeah. So when you when you get into its lair, it doesn't just have like carcasses of whatever the last thing it ate lying out. But rather, maybe it has a giant stone slab that's a cornucopia of forest food. Centerpiece around maybe an elephant if you're someplace, you know, um, Indian jungle or oriented or um, an enormous elk or some sort of enormous beast. And then fruits and other um, creatures or um, mushrooms and things growing and spread out and this enormous bounteous table. Maybe the dragon just likes to provide for the kobolds, right? Maybe it brings in some bounty and the uh, kobolds worship it with it, or you flip it around the other way. The kobolds have to bring in every day a copious bounty of feast for this dragon and its huge workout appetite, you know? Um, so when the players get in there and it just sees this mountain of food and they realize, I'm a snack. That's yeah. all I am. <laughs> I was going to actually say that's something you could have the outside of a green dragon's lair it is not necessarily any weird uh, forest like traps and trenches and such, but like a forest kobold village, like Ewok style. Ooh. Yeah. Like I just, was, was... can you imagine being the empire trying to get through the fucking <laughs> uh, kobold Ewoks and they just got logs <laughs> coming down and throwing rocks at you with, for some reason, machine-like precision. <laughs> <laughs> Stone arrows that are piercing your armor that was made in some foundry to make the best troops in the galaxy. And yet here you are getting rocked by these little assholes who can barely speak common. Well, you shoot 15 <laughs> feet to their left is a constant. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, well, legitimately, actual uh, canopy forest would be really cool idea for the kobolds outside it's like mm -hmm. a little micro dungeon before the actual lair yeah yeah and um zachariah brings sort of... up an interesting point too with the uh, dead bodies i was like yeah they would grow they would like growing things in mm -hmm. fact your dead bodies will now feed its mushroom and venomous fungus and death yellow Fertilizer. yellow fungus and yellow stuff ducks, like that yeah. that it likes to eat to improve its poison <laughs> Oh, can you imagine a green dragon that kept, like, a garden of yellow musk creepers? Yeah. Yes. And now it has the advanced template because it's been eating the most poisonous things it can find. Yeah. Well, it, it makes, it makes like, a special poisonous kind of, like, yellow musk zombie. But all of the yellow musk zombies are just dead kobolds. That's, like it's, uh, <laughs> that's like it's supplement cabinet, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. So there you go. I like the the ecology of uh, uh, like these kobolds with levels in ranger and hunter and druid and stuff are the ones bringing back all of the food for this the green dragon. I because I can't get the image of it. This f fucking Chad dragon just like doing push ups and pull ups and be like benching trees and garbage now. Uh, they like my nutrients, bro. Yeah. Get <laughs> He has to eat a really diverse diet, so there's kobolds constantly bringing in, like, fresh game and fruits from the forest, and, like, maybe there's a big garden full of vegetables and just, like, a, like a uh, I don't know, a 50-gallon barrel of whey powder in the middle of the powder, you know? Wait, mate, now wait, if that's all happening, does that mean that, and this is how the green co the green dragons are, does that mean how that's how the green kobolds are? Oh, God, they're also oh, yeah. yeah. They're they're all they're all jacked well, dude well. bros. <laughs> Rangers that all took the two weapon fire or two handed weapon combat training rather just sprinting at you with axes way too. No many. dude, no dude. They're yeah. all they're all uh, Titan Mauler barbarians. Yes, I was about to say, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they use real actual great swords, real actual great clubs, real which actual is not, which is like great moderately axes. impressive for a person, but <laughs> Yeah, on a bunch of four foot tall lizards running around with like, you know, uh, the great sword that Grognor, your barbarian, uses. It's a, it's a little upsetting. <laughs> Especially since they've got the stats to sneak in and get that sword from you before you have the chance to notice. 
<laughs> so say, maybe all the kobolds have to run like um run uh run laps and do acrobatics through the forest like um yoda makes luke do in <laughs> empire strikes back but only instead of having a little green frog on their back the dragon is like right there hounding them <laughs> run run you've got to run i said faster it's it's drill sergeant push it to the limit bro <laughs> Yeah. I was about to say, like, can you imagine if Yoda just Luke whenever he failed them? <laughs> I'm rooting for this green dragon now. I want him to win. Mm. Well, I'm super, I'm super excited about this dude bro Chad dragon. <laughs> what, what's interesting, too, is because it's lawful evil, lawful evil can be dealt with. You can yep. you can deal with lawful evil. It's not like a red dragon that's chaotic. It likes to, it'll just like to just myrtleize you for fun for a long time, as long as they can get the satisfaction out of it. The the green dragons, uh, they actually get satisfaction from other things that aren't evil. They get mm -hmm. satisfaction from their work, their their perfecting of themselves. And the book mm -hmm. that I have lets you know that uh, they like to. And this goes into feeding into that idea of dealing with them, and that they may be more more diplomatic than others. They like to lay their eggs and leaves and moistened with rainwater and such like that, or have them sit in oh, acid. That's nice. No, that's not that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> but they like to do either one, and it said that both parents usually watch the eggs and stay with the wormlings until adulthood, which means wormlings are are attended to. If you find a black, uh, a a green wormling just out and about, it's not it's, just it's out like, and about. Yeah, it's like when you find a baby right. bear, make sure oh, uh, mama can't yeah. see you. Yeah. 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 And the wormling. Immediately go the other way. And it's interesting because even though they're they really don't like other black, they don't like black dragons because they fight over layers. The. Yeah, I don't find those because they're assholes. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're just really toxic dragons. Okay. It's just, <laughs> the puns are always welcome here at the IOPC. Yeah, that's amazing. But uh, the wormlings, at least if you look at the D and D dragons, the the green wormlings are often mistaken for black wormlings because they haven't got their horn yet and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So plus they start out darker. Yeah. So there's there's that to consider. The favorite foods that the book listed was not all the stuff we listed. It was. Little folks such as gnomes and elves and fairies and sprites and short humans and kinder. Apparently, kinder? this yes, you know it actually mentioned kinder. kinder in this book. It actually they can mentioned have them. kinder. But... <laughs> they can have them, huh? They're like the worst. Not... They really are some of the worst aspects of gnomes and and halflings put together. Castle. Yeah. Like they were, yeah, someone someone wrote them in the book, and they were like, "This will see play at a table and won't irritate anyone." Uh, <laughs> Everybody likes like this. Well, after listening to the uh, the Dragonlance, the three book three books of the Dragonlance series, I was like, "Yeah, I can see how that would get really annoying at a table having a kinder, mm -hmm. but I can mm -hmm. see how it would be advantageous that they could never be afraid." I think it presents something interesting. But that's a discussion for another time. Yeah. yeah. Dangerous layers, the Kender's living room. <laughs> what did you bring? You don't have it anymore. Yep. <laughs> what did you bring? That's a goddamn shame. Uh, wait, you just uh, to backtrack real quick about talking about how um, <laughs> green dragons could sneak into your camp and steal your belongings. Um. Uh, that's totally a thing they could do. Um, not only do they get a bonus to, at least in Pathfinder, not only do they get a bonus to their stealth for being small sized, green dragons also get a large racial bonus to stealth whenever they are in thick undergrowth or jungle, like sort of forest environments. And can and, move through without leaving a trail. And uh, yeah, if if they're if they're like rangers or druids or something, like they're they're a fucking nightmare in the woods. <laughs> like they're. Yeah. Yep. They're like little green ghosts. Oh, what? You have little green Chad ghosts. That's cute. That's so cute. do I, but I have a fly speed of like 200 and something, and the canopy doesn't slow me down for some reason. Fair enough. Yeah, that's actually nightmares. Nightmares. Yeah, that's, that's, it's, it's literally, it's like one. Yeah, name drop. <laughs> 
it's like one <laughs> it's like one green cobalt ranger with like skill focus and stealth at second level has like a plus 18 to the skill and it you, you, flip, there's all your stuff it's gone uh i hope you guys had fun making your characters you're now naked and afraid <laughs> um, <laughs> have you had fun making your characters i will enjoy killing them yep well uh going back real quick to some final notes that i have because we're at 30 minutes um okay. The living lair idea is really, really good, especially when you think about how they could be... Uh, we were talking before the stream about how they have the ability to... I think you guys, one of them has the ability to summon or make ints, the ancient. Yes. So you could yeah, have this whole form. evil shepherd of the forest going on where... Mm -hmm. Imagine if Treebeard wasn't so nice and, mm -hmm. and he was more than willing to do all the nasty stuff that the, that whole group of trees went and did to those orcs fleeing from Helm's Deep. Yeah, they'll just do that to everybody. Oh. With a rock and stone. Rock and stone. stone! Yeah, if you read about... if you Go back sometime, somebody who hasn't done it in a while, and listen to the Two Towers portion where it talks about how Merry and Pippin watched the Ents just drill in with their fingers and rip stone like it was nothing yeah that's what a dragon yeah, that's what a green dragon could do with its stone yeah. with its different magical abilities and stuff your your basic treant has a strength of 29 <laughs> just keep that in mind fuck i think okay or a 30 so also the book mentions that they are good liars and if they like poison so much and they're so well read and versed. Why stop at poisoning the body? Why not poison yeah. the mind? Mm -hmm. So you can have corruptors. You can have a whole bunch of fun with that as a DM. Yeah, watch a couple documentaries about Jeffrey Dahmer before you run a green dragon for your party. <laughs> uh, pro probably enlightening in some uncomfortable ways. Okie dokie. Okay, I was getting distracted by something. Go on. We are at 32 minutes and 37 seconds. Anybody got some final notes on green dragons? We should probably say something about if you want to use a green dragon in your campaigns. Uh, first edition Pathfinder put out a first to seventh, I believe, module called the Dragon's Demand, which I haven't run, but like is a very popular adventure that I have heard about in a lot of different places, so I have to assume it's good if you wanted to, like, no prep, full on, here's the dragon, do the thing that I have to assume features like a major NPC over the course uh, of the adventure. It's it's the primary antagonist of the uh, the adventure, the, the module. You don't fight them immediately, but they do show up early on. And demand um, something. Yeah, right? The, the only thing I would recommend about that module, if you're going to run it, is read the traps before you run them. <laughs> That's just like the GMing 101, though. Some Are they of them bad? need rebalancing. Oh. Oh, <laughs> like like your, your first level in the dungeon in a trap drops 20d6 of alchemist fire on you. Oh, nice. Yeah. Kinda, that kills mm, people. That, mm. yeah. I guess Paizo's employing a cobalt, so there you go. <laughs> Scorched Earth tactics. <laughs> I want Scorched Earth. Nothing lives. All right. Anything uh, else? Not for me. Nothing except that. Okay, what's that? It's a picture. He sent us a picture. I'm bringing it up. <laughs> of a green dragon with, uh, a, with a protein shake container and an afro. <laughs> there you go. Okay. There's, there's that. There's that. <laughs> What a like terrible said. day to have eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I showed it to the people on the on this on the recording. What to say? There's a little extra editing for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. As always, have a great day. God bless and enjoy. Bye. 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 Yeah, I got a little distracted by making Chat Dragon. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs>
This content was made possible by travelers and viewers like you. Thank you.